have a sort of massive project that I've been working on um, today for you guys. I'm going to show you an upwards of like 75 nail polishes and it's because if you can tell by the title I am going to go through all of in my brain the major brands and talk about um, some things from the past. I am doing a new series on my channel which is going to be every Friday for a couple of weeks called Flashback Friday and I'm going to go through again the main brands and talk about some of my favorite collections and polishes from those brands and I thought I would do this because you guys really have been liking the sort of shop my stash style videos that I've done for the last um, I would say like six months because I would also clump in my like underrated nail polishes videos um, and the shop my stash spring nail polish video that I just did and um, yeah I just you guys have been responding to that pretty positively so um, a couple of months ago I thought I would start doing a sort of flashback Friday sort of video which is actually what I'm gonna call this series flashback Friday and talk about just old nail polishes that I have that I like and that I want to use more this is a two notebook project and lots of research project, but um, I have a bunch of notes written to myself here. This is going to be, again, a couple of weeks. I know I'm going to do, well, today's OPI, but I know I'm going to do China Glaze, Zoya, um, and Essie. I might do, like, high-end, so I have some, like, Butter London and Rescue Beauty Lounge, even though they're not a brand anymore, um, Chanel and stuff, and then I might do an Indies one, but I'm not quite sure because the indies one would be a little bit different because it's harder to um, track down collections and timelines and all of that. So this is going to be videos on this channel but I will also have photographs on my nail polish Instagram for swatches for all of these and yeah I'm going to take swatches of all of these so today after I film this video I have to swatch 75 nail polishes and I'm also going to just like consolidate it all into one blog post for you guys once a week so you guys can have all the pictures and the video in one place if you are somebody that likes just having it all in one resource. I My Instagram, my nail polish Instagram will be linked down below. It'll be the second link because the first link will actually be the website that I used to source all of these like collections. Um, I found a blog that has basically a database or um, just a catalog of every OPI collection um, and a list chronologically of all of the nail polish release nail polishes released in all of these collections since like 1997 and they have it for Zoya and China Glaze and stuff so that'll be the first link down below um, if you guys are just interested in a um, just research perspective it, it's an interesting resource to look at so it'll be linked down below I kind of briefly went over why I wanted to do this it was because you guys did like the shop my stash type of videos um, and I also included like the underrated nail polish videos but really why I wanted to do this was because I need a project because I'm on a no buy and because I really wanted to reconnect with my collection um, it's a really strange thing to say but when you are somebody that collects nail polish or collects anything I feel like everyone gets to a point even if it's like baseball cards or stamps or models or whatever there's a point where you just want to reconnect with the things that you have and kind of rediscover why you love them i think every sort of collector goes through that sensation i just need to use my stuff again and i wanted to reconnect with my stuff and really discover again why I got into nail polish and why I love these things. This series is going to have a lot of overlap with the Beautiful Beginning series that I did a really long time ago. The Beautiful Beginning series for me was talking about my story with certain brands and so why I got into collections and why I keep collecting and things like that and nostalgic bits for me and so a lot of this series and that series is going to have overlap in terms of stories but this is definitely just going to be a my opinion what were the best colors and collections throughout the years from about 2009 to now because that's when I started YouTube and started collecting nail polish. So I started collecting nail polishes at around September of 2009. So at that point I was able to catch um, at least find the tail end of 2008. The polishes released from 2008 still in random stores but um, a lot of collecting at that point for me was done online on e-tailers so it was pretty easy for me to find polishes, random polishes that I wanted as well as current polishes for that time. Um, the 2008 collections that I 
went looking for mostly started with the French collection. There was also the India collection and then before that there was the Russia collection and I didn't necessarily start purchasing all of those polishes at that point. I've been recently sort of still looking for those polishes and adding them to my collection until my no buy but um, before 2009 I didn't collect nail polish. Nail polish wasn't really a, th a thing for me. I didn't really discover YouTube and stuff until I started my channel. So when I started my channel, my two like nail polish resources were Scrangy, or like the logs, which was headed by Scrangy, all lacquered up, along with YouTube, Blair Fowler being the main person that I first started following because she was one of the first ones that I started watching. Pixie Woo and Blair were actually the first two channels that I started watching. Pixie Woo did only makeup though, so Blair was a big reason why I started looking specifically into OPI because at that point in 2009 she really only talked about OPI nail polish. I also noticed with Scrangy that OPI was a big part of her blog and so for me to go searching for OPI was something that was like a goal. That was my starter goal and starting to collect nail polish, OPI was like my Mac. It was my like gateway drug into nail polish collecting. The very, the very first OPI nail polish I ever purchased was Tickle My Francie, which was part of the France collection. Um, I remember walking into a local beauty supply store, seeing OPI, and then remembering Tickle My Francie from Scrangy's blog. And then I also just looked through Scrangy's OPI tag in her blog, looked at every single OPI collection or video, sorry, or post that she had in that blog, and I wrote down every single OPI nail polish that I wanted, which resulted in a weird little random collection of colors. For me, very focused on color colors and not really neutrals. One of them was No Room for the Blues, which is a brighter blue cream. There was Dating a Royal. There was Gargantuan Green Grape. Do You Lilac It? Those, this one was specifically inspired by Blair because she, she did like a manicure video about this. Um, OPI Ink was a classic one for me. Russian Navy was a shimmery dark blue that I saw on Scrangy's blog and I absolutely loved it. Sweetheart was from Blair's channel, which is a neutral sort of bridal pink, but um, after I found Bubble Bath and I hated it, Sweetheart was the one that I went and searched for. And then Classic Dark, Linkin Park After Dark, My Private Jet, which I didn't realize the original My Private Jet was like a black hollow, so I found My Private Jet on e-tailers and picked it up immediately and still fell in love with it because I didn't realize this wasn't the real version, but um, My Private Jet was up there and so was Mod About You, which is a bright pink cream. So I had this weird little collection of like brights and darks and polishes that I had never owned before due to Scrangy and Blair and their OPI nail polish collections. September 2009, I was still able to find the tail end of available um, collections from 2008. So the France collection was the one collection I remember really seeking out because Scrangy really loved it. The two colors that stood out to me the most were Parley Vu OPI, which is that dusty, purpley, beigey, gray color, which is so hard to dupe. I've never found a dupe of this since I bought this. And do, You Don't Know Jacques, which is that sort of ugly, pretty, grayish brown color. And both of these colors were, again, sort of iconic OPI colors to me because Scrangy loved them so much. And so I went and searched for them like immediately. The first collection that I was able to actually purchase at the time that it released was the Espana oh sorry, or the Spain collection, which um, Blair did a video on, and she had the whole collection, and I, again, sat down and wrote all these nail polish names that I absolutely needed to have. The first one was Here Today, Aragon Tomorrow, which is a dark, dark green um, with apparently a little bit of a black shimmer. It has like a black speckle going through it, but it's not, to me, it's definitely like a dark, dark, dark green cream because there's no shimmer in mine. Eight Berries and the Canaries was the other one that I absolutely loved. It was a purpley, berry, pinky color, and it was just so different than other the other like random colors that I had. And I was still in that mode of trying to satiate my need for like one shade of every color. After that collection came the 2009 Holiday Collection, which is still to date my favorite holiday collection because it came with Smitten with Mittens, which is my absolute favorite OPI nail polish. It is a red with a gold shimmer running through it. It's the most beautiful holiday color. It's the most beautiful red. But that collection was so 
different to me because I remember Scrangy writing about how flakies were hard to find at that point and OPI came out with flakies and there were these shimmers and these reds and I just fell in love with that collection and ended up collecting almost every single color from that collection. Um, another favorite is All A Bordeaux The Sled, which is a very, very dark, vampy, brownie red, which was different than, again, most of the other colors that I had owned at that point. There were the two flakies, which this one is Merry Midnight and this is Shimmery Chic. Love You So Much was a dark, shimmery, vampy red, and I have a Nail of the Week post on my blog from so long ago, and this is one of the first Nail of the Weeks that I did, and it's like the most awkward photo, it's like the worst hand placement and the worst manicure ever, but I just remember being so in love with this and wanting to show everyone this color, so that's why I did that. Um, and then this color, Sapphire in the Snow, is like a bluish, purpley, like a blurple, Cream, and again so different than anything that I had ever owned. Soon after that came the Alice in Wonderland collection. Um, that was the first collection I believe of 2010 um, and it came out with those multicolored glitters. Absolutely Alice is one that is like so coveted by people and I'm so upset that I didn't purchase it but Mad as a Hatter is one that I did manage to find. Um, I will no I had seen Absolutely Alice but I just passed on it for whatever reason and now I hate myself for it. Mad as a Hatter was the first like multicolored micro glitter that I feel like OPI was really ever made and was like so sought after and um, it's not a great nail polish actually but it's um, it's really cool and it's like they've never done one since like this I don't think and then came the Hong Kong collection that was another collection that was the first spring collection by OPI that I was around for to really look at the whole collection and figure out which ones that I wanted to on my own. For me, the runaway star of that collection was Jade is the New Black, which is kind of like a dusty green with cool undertones to it. This one I had to shake up quite a bit and it's not quite at the color it's supposed to in the bottle, but it was definitely a very understated but still bright green, which I absolutely loved. And then two other favorites from that collection were Lucky Lucky Lavender and Pandemonium Pink. I still reach for these actually because they're so flattering. Next came the Shrek collection and I remember again being super obsessed with that collection and having to find all the colors in them because they were so different. And like the Shrek greens, for example, drove me nuts because like I had never seen that color green before and I knew I had to have it. I remember um, Amarique's Allison used to work at a beauty supply store and did a video on the Shrek collection and it looked so good on her and it looked so good on Scrangy and it looked like good on everyone that I'd ever seen and so I was so excited to get a Shrek green which is just like the ugliest like swampy green color but in nail polish form is perfect. Fiercely Fiona was similar from that collection. It's a little bit more of a banana tone. It's still a green but it's like a um, it's more yellowy. I just loved that collection because they were all bright and creamy and Shrek-y colors and again it was different for me and it was so exciting for me to find a collection that I could purchase two greens from like the ugliest greens but I loved them and I wore them all the time at that point. Oh this is still from Hong Kong which I forgot but this is Susie Says Feng Shui and this is a sort of tealy blue color and I've always been a collector of teals, but I remember when Hong Kong came out, this was like the perfect teal for Sharks games for me, so I was so excited that this came out. And then the fall collection for that year was the Swiss collection, and my favorite from that collection was Ski Teal We Drop, which is a darker teal color, and this was another San Jose Sharks sort of teal that I was in love with and I wore all the time. For winter that year, they did the Burlesque collection, which um, the Burlesque collection I loved. It was shimmers and it was glitters and it was so fun and I, they did like a whole, like six glass flecks and six micro glitters and I just, why doesn't OPI still do that? I don't know, but it was amazing and I still think that the burlesque collection, um, as like bad as that movie was, was one of their most unique and beautiful collections. Um, this one I talked about in one of my underrated nail polish videos, The Show Must Go On, but it's a shifty like glass fleck, orangey, pinky red, and it's gorgeous. Sparklicious was one of the glitters, and this is very similar to Mad as a Hatter, but it is 
a gold and blue and purple micro glitter. This was another collection that I went and just every day visited the beauty supply store in my area to see if they were coming in with that collection and asking when they were going to get it. And when they finally got it, I picked one of everything and just immediately went home and did a video and took photos. And I was so excited about that collection. The beginning of 2011, there was the Texas collection for the spring, which was not my favorite. I didn't think that it was as cool as some of the other OPIs at that point and that was kind of the starting point for where OPI took a back seat. I started sort of paying attention to other nail polish companies and stuff. They, I remember they had like sheer reds and it was like a collection of like red and orange jellies and then like random creams and I was not a huge fan of those. Um, but then after that came the Katy Perry collection which was one of the best celebrity um, pair up collections that I think they've done and also introduced the world again to shatter nail polish and the trend that went on for a year and a half after that. Um, the two standout co colors to me from the Katy Perry collection, obviously Teenage Dream is the first one and it is a very very soft pink um, glitter with hollow glitter and micro glitter and it's gorgeous and it's just, it's one of my top OPI nail polish colors and I remember seeing this in swatch photos and knowing that I had to get multiple. The other one that not didn't get a lot of love but I really loved was Last Friday Night which is like a really really kind of hard to deal with blue jelly but it came with a bunch of iridescent opalescent glitter and like micro glitter in it. I feel like that's when OPI really actually started to do a lot more celebrity um, collaborations and that year they also did a collaboration with Serena Williams because I guess she had gotten her manicure license and she did four duo packs which all coincided with tennis grand slam championship things and so um, they all had one sort of like effect polish so there was a shatter or a glitter along with like a different more fun color um, I actually really loved the colors that she came up with. This first one is Simply Smashing, which is like a, first, say that without Nigel Thornberry's voice, but Simply Smashing is like a limey grass green glass flex shimmer and it's so pretty. Um, Pros and Bronze is an orangey, bronzy, pinky, shifty glass fleck as well. And then really Rally Pretty Pink is a purple with a gold shimmer running through it. They also did a movie collaboration for spring that year for Pirates of the Caribbean, um, which came out with a bunch of like dusty toned colors, which was pretty cool. This is Mermaid's Tears, which is like a dusty turquoise. Steady As She Rose, which actually ended up being my favorite, which is like a dusty pinky purple. It's like a dusty version of Lucky Lucky Lavender. And then this is Stranger Tides, which is like a green toned gray. So I thought those were pretty unique and of that collection these are the three that I still have and still stuck with me and I still remember like loving them over some of the other colors that OPI had come out with that year. Between the Pirates of the Caribbean collection and their fall collection which was touring America they had a mini collection um, based off of the Miss Universe competition and that collection is so underrated because it came out with like four really gorgeous colors. Um, these two are my favorite of the, the mini collection, but this is like the most reflective silver glitter, and I use this all the time. It's like a silver foil with a silver hex glitter running through it, but it's really, really dense, and so you get this crazy, like, diamondy looking nail. It's called Crown Me Already. And then this is the brightest blue of all time. This is um, Swimsuit Nailed It, and it's like a metallic foiled bright blue. And I feel like nobody really talked about these, but they were so, so pretty. And just, they didn't get a lot of hype, and I don't know why, but they just, they're gorgeous colors. Again, the fall collection for that year was Touring America, which came out with a bunch of, like, again, dustier colors for the fall. They didn't do a ton of, like, bright jewel tones, but they did, like sort of murkier versions of them. These two I think were the only ones that I purchased from that collection. This is I Break for Manicures, which is a dark, um, it's like Linkin Park After Dark, but it's much less saturated, so it's got like a gray tone to it. Um, and this is Roadhouse Blues, which is a dark blue and is kind of like Sapphire in the Snow, but again, grayer. For holiday that year, they did the Muppets collection and it was, 
it was an interesting collection because it reminded me a lot of burlesque but it was not as good in my opinion i thought that burlesque was just like a knockout and it was so so cool and they did pretty okay with the muppets collection because they did come out with like warm and fuzzy which is a warm teddy bear brown type color with a shifty bronze shimmer running through it um and then they have like designer de better which is a foily slightly bronze toned silver with a bronze shimmer running through it as well um and then they had a bunch of like chunky glitters which this is rainbow connection and this is fresh frog of bel air which you know they were okay chunky glitters were kind of deborah Lippmann's thing at that point so i had deborah Lippmann glitters to satiate my need for the opi ones but it was cool that opi started realizing that that's where the trend was going to do those glitters and sort of step out of the salon box if you will um, my favorite from the muppets collection though is called excuse moi and it is a really almost red pink with a bunch of micro glitter mixed into it and this layered over a bright pink is the most beautiful Barbie pink nail. After that in 2012 Nicki Minaj did a collaboration collection in January of 2012. Um, these are my favorite two from that collection. This is Did It On Em which I really liked because it reminded me of the Shrek collection and this is Fly and it's my favorite teal cream actually because it's like a perfect teal cream. For spring that year they did the Holland collection which I think originally I wasn't really crazy about because I didn't think that it was very unique um, because I again had gotten to the point where I was so saturated on just your basic spring and fall colors that I didn't need as many nail polishes from upcoming OPI collections which you will see because they just die down like I don't buy as many nail polishes from every collection from here on out and then the Holland collection came out and um, it was okay it wasn't my favorite but they did have three nail polishes that I did really actually like this is I have a herring problem and this one is I don't give a Rotterdam and they're both sort of uh, they're both unsaturated blues with a bunch of sh silver shimmer running through them. And the other part of that collection that I thought was really nice was a bunch of hidden shimmers. Um, this is Wouldn't She Like to Know, which is a brown, which I don't wear a lot of browns, as you can see, but it has a gold shimmer running through it. So I thought that was just gorgeous and, like, I wish they did more polishes like this as well. The soft shades for that year was my favorite soft shades collection that they have ever done. It came out with the, they came out with the New York City Ballet collection and they had soft shades but they were in like weird colors like this purple which I thought was so pretty. It's called Care to Dance and um, Dance being spelled in French. D-A-N-S-E. Dance. Um, and it's like a sheer purpley color but the best part of that collection was this glitter called Pirouette My Whistle, which is a clear base with a bunch of silver micro glitter and pearly white hex glitter in it, and it's not super dense, so when you put it on your nail, it's a really elegant glitter. The Spider-Man collection came out soon after that, and I regret so much not buying my boyfriend Scales Walls, which is an off-white gray, and I still, to this day, regret it. But, um... The other color from that collection, which I don't even know why I didn't buy that one, but the other color from that collection that I thought was probably the best in that collection was Just Spotted the Lizard, which is that duochrome color that got super popular that year. Chanel did a color like this. Chani Glaze did an entire collection of duochromes. Fall that year, they did Germany. And the two colors that were the standouts for me from, from the Germany collection were Germanic Here by OPI and Every Month is Oktoberfest, which look very similar in camera and as I hold them here, but Every Month is Oktoberfest is like a purpley base with a super rich red shimmer running through it and then Germanicure by OPI is mostly like a red and a brown but they're just the most beautiful red dark vampy shimmers and they're still ones that I go to quite often in the fall. The last collection of 2012 was the OPI Skyfall collection and I am a huge Bond nerd and so I was really excited about that. I bought the entire collection, I just did what I hadn't done in a very long time I think at that point and sought out the collection, the entire collection. I stocked stores and wanted to get every single one because, again, James Bond was something that was really something that I was like interested in, so that's what drew me to that collection. This was just kind of like the promotional 
fun part of the collection, but this is the man with the golden gun, the 18 karat gold flaky top coat, which was a popular trend for a while, but um, I kept it in the box just for collector purposes, and I use it as like a decorative piece in my room now, but that was kind of like a gimmicky fun thing. Um, but my favorites from that collection, my absolute favorite from that collection is Goldeneye, because this is the most molten gold looking shimmer ever. My second favorite from that collection is Tomorrow Never Dies, which is a very, very vibrant blue shimmer in a purple base. Like, I feel like I bought that, I got this, and I looked at the color, and I just, I looked at it, and I felt like they hadn't done a color like this in a long time. And then the other two colors that didn't get as much love, but I still really liked, this one is The World Is Not Enough, and this one is uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and these are both sort of glass flecky nail polishes that, again, I think they do glass flecks really well, I just don't know why they don't do them anymore, or do them very often. Um, that year, Zoya did come out with colors that are very similar to this, though, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just don't do glass flex because they know Zoya doesn't better, but they're very, very pretty colors. And then 2013 was the year of textures. It started with Mar the Mariah Carey collection that had, um, like, her January collection, because she also did Holiday that year, which came out with the first textured nail polishes. Zoya did her, their pixie dust at that point. Um, but the spring collection that year was the Euro Central collection, which I was not impressed by, so I didn't buy any of them at the point of release and since then I think like a year later I ended up with four of them but um, the four that I did like was A Woman's Prerogative which is similar to Goldeneye but it's a little bit more orange toned. Um, I Can't Find My Checkbook which is a turquoise cream. This is You're Such a Budapest which is like this is the one that really I held off on buying for so long but just cracked because it's so pretty but it's like a periwinkle-y color. It's a little bit more purple than a periwinkle. And then My Vampire is Buff which I bought strictly for nail polish art purposes. I wanted an off-white to do sort of floral designs on but it's actually a very pretty color on its own. I, yeah, I just for whatever reason was not impressed at all by that collection and didn't buy any of them until like a year later. That year, because textures were so big, they did a separate Bond Girls collection and did an entire, like, textures based off the Bond Girls. This is the best one from that collection. This is Jinx, and it's that sort of tangerine, orange... Altoids came out with a sour candy a while ago, and they had orange, like, tangerine sours, and this is, like, the nail polish version of it. Um, but it's, like, a tangerine orange with a gold shimmer in that textured form, and it's beautiful, and it's one of, again, one of the most unique polishes OPI came out with. I mean, Zoya had a one really similar to this, and I want to say the Julie G collection came out with one very similar to this, but this, in the textured format, was stunning. And if you put a hollow on this and put a top coat on top, it's like the most beautiful summer manicure. Another liquid sand is from the San Francisco collection, and this year, I guess 2013, was like the year of emotional nail polish collections for me because I bought the entire San Francisco collection because I'm from the Bay Area so it's fun for me to have all those colors. I still have all of them but um, this is really the only one that I still really reach for from that collection. This is Alcatraz Rocks which was the liquid, one of three liquid sands in that collection and it's stunning and again put a hollow on top of this and put a top coat on top and it's like the most beautiful nail polish combo. And then at the very, very end of that year, Mariah Carey had another collection, her holiday collection, which was actually a really nice collection. Um, if you are somebody that likes neutrals, um, they did a bunch of liquid sand neutrals, which have been some of my favorite go-to on-the-go nail polish manicure colors. Like, I've worn this on the way to a wedding. I've worn this on the way out to babysit. I've worn this on the way, because it's just like so easy to put on, and it dries fast, and it's a flattering color um, in the shimmery liquid liquid sand texture um because you don't need a top coat for it and these like stay on my nails like cement and stuff but that collection was actually really pretty I remember thinking that was a holiday collection that I actually wanted from OPI that I haven't like I haven't wanted to do that in a very long time so um that for me was like OPI's redemption collection after like a year of meh collection so that was the end of 2013 and since 2013 I haven't really been impressed by OPI. 2014 there was the Brazil collection which was okay. 
They had some brights and stuff, but nothing too earth shattering. Um, they had a bunch of mini collections. They had like a neons collection. They had neons is in quote because they're not real neons. They're just like bright. There were brights. Um, they had a Coca-Cola collection, Ford Mustang collection. They did a mini Gwen Stefani collection. I think Gwen Stefani did holiday 2015. Again, not super enthused about the collections that happened. So yeah, that kind of is my history with OPI and my flashback Friday to some of my favorite OPI nail polishes of all time. There are 75 of these polishes, so again, this is a very loose favorite of all times, but I thought it would be fun to just kind of recap what happened with OPI and, um, you know, flash back to some of their really classically awesome colors that they have come out with. So yeah, if you guys liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're a nail polish lover, I would love to know what your favorite OPI collections and OPI colors have been in the past. Um, if you are somebody that has been collecting nail polish longer than I have, I would love to know pre-2009 what I was missing out on or um, what you miss about some of the old OPI colors. And then otherwise, um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I promise not every one of my videos is this long but it's a new series so I had to kind of explain things but um, otherwise I hope you guys are doing well and if you guys want to see more of these videos again I'm doing China Glaze, Essie, and Zoya if you want to see the indies and the high end then I would be happy to do them just let me know in the comments down below you can even comment with anything down in the comments down below and I will read them and eventually respond to them but yeah I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you guys soon